about uh, socialism and, and democracy, terms that most of us don't really know, all the while where folks are just in your pocket and, 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 and taking your children from you. You have a school district that's 98% minority, and they're telling the minorities you can't even teach and train your own children. And that might be true because where have you been? Where have you been? Let me, let, me, let me mention something, uh, because I don't really want to get distracted. Remember, this is going to be about uh, Mr. H.B. Chambers, superintendent, needing to resign immediately, Sarah Winkler needing, needing to resign immediately, because what will happen is, and I'm going to engage you on this church issue, we'll get, get caught up in the theology and the philosophy, and we forget what we really are, are about right here. What we're talking about is these people that are the leaders in that school district that are not doing what they need to do, in my opinion in my opinion and the opinion of many many others and if some of you would go out and just research it, see I can disappear tomorrow but if you're in a situation if, if, let me say this when we start talking about those mass shootings if the conditions are right for something oh, terribly wrong as that to happen if it's right the time to catch it is before it occurs now I, I'm not trying to be a hero here I'm putting myself out there I'm knocking out a large portion of my market here. When I start talking about pastors, you think pastors are going to appreciate that? I'm a pastor. I'm a trained the theologian. I have, multiple, I have multiple degrees in ministry. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking from very reputable universities. If we continue the conversation, it will become very obvious. I'm an avid reader. None of that means anything if I don't do something about it. So right now what we need to do is put that focus on those children in a leaf because you'll see it's a microcosm of what's happening in Houston, like you just mentioned, HISD. And other, I don't know as much about the statistics, but if, 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 if a leaf is in any way similar to what's going on, it's happening in those places too. And here's the call. I'm making a call out, first of all, to my community, to the black men in this city not just the elected officials, we must hold them accountable, but the black men in the city need to step to the plate and bring something to the table. Not interested in playing church games, not interested in that at all. You all can play those games if you want to, but at the end of the day, what are we doing for the community? How are we impacting these children? Now, let me say this too before I, I get too far off. The pastors, you have great pastors all over. The issue is, how do you identify who they are? You can't identify them because of the size of the church. You have to identify them that Jesus identified them by the fruits of your work. So let's...
I don't have anything else to do but that. It's not that I'm doing anything special. I'm just being who I am. <laughs> it's just me. I was raised a free black man, and I'm not about to give up that right now. Thank God I wasn't raised during slavery because, well, maybe I might not have been like this, but I probably I'd have been running off the plantation, you know. Hey, 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 I got a, a T-shirt. I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. And some of you guys probably going to steal this T-shirt, but I'm going to throw it out there. The T-shirt on the front says, Kunta can read. And on the back it says, and he can count. That means you just can't pull the wool over people's eyes when you can read and write and send information out to your people. And then you turn around and look at the other side where it says being able to count. We need to understand the language of business. That's accounting. We're being ripped off and kept enslaved. Here we are over here in Third Ward looking up and down these streets here. The buildings are improving. I wonder who's doing this. Hmm. Okay. So uh, that's all I'm going to do. That is just an opinion. It's an opinion. Thank you very much. The telephone number is 713. 526-1230 and today is this is the Entrepreneurs Network show uh, normally we're here talking about uh, entrepreneurship amongst young people but in fact this is a very relevant topic because the, the theme for the Legacy Leaders Academy a virtual after school program designed to teach young people entrepreneurship and raise a generation of entrepreneurs See, I can't wait on you old folks I'm 56 but I can't wait on on you guys because right now it's too many too many obstacles in your mind psychological chains that have enslaved you. So I can't really wait on, on all you guys. And you'll, you'll talk a good fight, and then we'll end up going back doing the same old thing we've been doing. So to impact these young people, which is one of the reasons why they decided to uh, escort me off the uh, A-Leaf school campus with police escort, I still really don't know why. But since they offered me, what, $55,000 to stay home uh, for the whole year, now, does that sound like somebody who's doing something that they shouldn't have done? How did I get to stay home and receive paychecks on a regular basis from the A.D. School District for the entire year? Because they thought that I was going to just go home and be quiet. See, that just shows you the mismanagement and the poor thinking and the lack of understanding with the people that are leading that district. Um, I, 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 immediately, I went to the Internet and put all the documents on the Internet. Go to the, the website, heat, H-E-A-T, dot group site, G-R-O-U-P. S-I-T-E dot com. You'll see information there. You'll see a lot of things. And it's, and it's, and it's hard hitting. It's hard hitting. And, it, and let, me, let me also say this. I distinguish, when I'm talking about some racial issues on there. I distinguish, make a distinction between Anglo-Americans and, and white people. When I talk about Anglo-Americans, I'm giving all due respect to those Anglo-Americans who are our buddies, who live and die and surround us and love us just like a brother. I'm, I give all due respect to those people. When I start talking about white people, I'm talking about the hardcore racist mentality that thinks that you know, white supremacy basically means this. Look it up. It means a group that believes that they are the number one group in the world. That's one part of it. The second part of it says, the definition says, and they believe that they're supposed to control all other groups. Now, if those, that was black people, we'd be talking about black supremacy. If it was orange people, we'd be talking about orange supremacy. But there's a mentality of white supremacy in the school district in Ailey. I challenge you to go over there and check it out for yourself. See, you don't, don't, you don't have to believe me. I've got records. I wouldn't be on the radio talking about these kinds of things and not being able to really address these issues without paperwork if you just looked at the paperwork. That's why, that's why the principal over there who is absolutely um, challenged and he's scary. And I want to call the names and we'll call the names. I think we'll do a little press conference and call the names of those individuals that have said and made statements and have written material on, on the uh, books in a -League. If you just would go and read the document, let me give you an example. I asked the principal a question about some paperwork that had to be done, uh, done for special education. He didn't want to answer the question. And so as we were walking down the hall, um, I, I asked him again. By the time we got through in our discussion, we are walking down the hall with hundreds of kids in the hallway, all around us, almost shoulder to shoulder. 
principal jumped back, screamed, are you, are you threatening me? I didn't know what he was talking about. By the time that, the, uh, within an hour, he called human resources over to the building. See, this is really funny. That's why it's so sad. I can challenge you in this community to go over there and take a look. It's embarrassing that this kind of ignorance and incompetence would be tolerated because it's too easy. This document, they documented it themselves. I was amazed. When, the, when, the, when, the, when, when we uh, ended up in the principal's office within an hour, and uh, this is like comedy. I need to get a comedy show. When we ended up in the principal's office within an hour with human resource director there, or human resource assistant director, by the way, Look who they sent over to adjudicate our disagreement. They sent a former principal who I just filed a grievance on that year, just months before, and he was removed from the campus and given a job in the human resource department. This is who they sent over to adjudicate my situation. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Now I might get a little excited here because I'm passionate about it. And, and angry about it, not me being dismissed from the school. I've been praying, God, get me out of this place because I love it. I worked in special ed for years. I love what I do. I love my children. Go and talk to people who know me. I'm not talking about people who think they know me. Go and talk to them. I spend time in the classroom. Love these kids. Love these children. Love my community. Period. But when, he, when, when we were in the room, it suddenly dawned on me. When he said that I threatened him, it dawned on me. I said, wait a minute. How did I threaten you? And he said, uh, after uh, 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 your voice was elevated. Yeah, I said it. Your voice was elevated. You mean to tell me, here I am, triple degree uh, uh, professional, black male, um, black male, in multiple mm -hmm. doctoral programs that I've worked on, I had to switch around from something that I really, really found that I love to do. You're pushing me out of the district because uh, my voice was elevated in a hallway with hundreds of children. Now watch this, here's the comedy part about it. Cause see again, it's not even about this person. It's not even, and then you send, a, this with the, this with the administration, they sent a, um, they sent the person who I filed a grievance on, they sent him over to adjudicate the situation. That just shows you the disrespect, the incompetence um, of, of what we're dealing with here. They do it to themselves. When you go look at this paperwork, and somebody's going to look at this paperwork, because if this person is, who's displaying behaviors that are very questionable by people who are trained in education, trained as police officers, trained as, as, as a special education coordinators, trained as special education teachers, parents, we had a Harris County probation officer walk in the building and stand at the front desk and it is reported that the principal rushed up on him and asked him, what are you doing here? Who are you? And it was so offensive that the Harris County probation officer looked at him and said, man, don't really, this is what the report was, don't run up on me like that. I'm a Harris County probation officer. The first time I spoke with this principal in life was while he was escorting me to his office on the second or third day of school uh, because I had taken some pictures in a, in a professional development of a Hispanic man dressed up as a hardcore thug, but he happened to end up being a, a PhD from, I think he's from Harvard. And I took pictures just like everybody else in the meeting. He called me out and as he was walking me to his office, I didn't know what it was for, he engaged me in conversation. The first things he told me, these are the first words in the history of our relationship where he told me about three African runners who were brought into his university and replaced him. He, called, he lost his scholarship as a result. That's the first thing he was talking to me about, and I was like, where did that come from? Where did that come from? By the time he got to the office and he brought another assistant principal in there, he told me he was calling me in there because he knew I was taking pictures and he was, he was familiar with my political affiliation and all this. Really, he was doing what he's been sent over there to do. You know, try to deal with Errol Jones' situation, and, and, and I'm not bragging, but you, you just sent somebody over there. He, he was way over his head. He's over his head now. He's pressured right now. You all on that campus, you see him walking around you see him, as, as it's been reported, reportedly sneaking around the campus. Don't make me have to call the names out with the instances that you all have, been in, have, you have, you all have had to go through in dealing with this principal. Reports have gone to central administration. The human resource department is aware of this. The behavior is erratic and irrational. Parents, now watch. The behaviors are the kind of behaviors that you hear about 
from people engaged in situations like mass shootings and dangerous other situations dealing with people. Now, am I saying that he is going to shoot the building up? You can't say hell no on the radio, can you? No, I'm not saying that. That's not the point. What we're talking about is a situation that needs to be looked into. And the refusal and the willingness of the elite administration to allow this man to still be in charge at this school. No one seems to know how he got hired. Check the records. I'm giving you stuff you can check the records. Mr. Jones, you're a disgruntled uh, ex-employee. Yes, I am. But I'm not disgruntled for the reasons that you think I am. I'm disgruntled because I left too many of my friends behind. I left people there who, who are qualified to be a department chair, but instead of allowing them to be a department chair, uh, the black man has to share half of the chairman, the department chairmanship, it's only two teachers there, with an Anglo female. They have to share. No other department sharing. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Let me give you some other insight and watch. Watch how what watch what changes. Go to the A-Leaf School District. You're gonna see a big red poster. Go in the boardroom. As soon as you walk in, look to the left, look around all the schools. You're gonna see a big red poster with about seven, eight, nine children on the poster. You cannot distinguish what their race is, but they appear to be either Anglo or very fair-skinned and uh, Hispanics who look like they might be Anglo on this picture. And there's one African-American. Now, African-Americans are 30 some odd percent of the population and there's one African-American. And they didn't have enough sense to take a full picture of her face. They put this picture on the wall prominently with a little girl with half a head cut off from the nose down, excuse me, from the eyeballs down. Every other child on there is pictured full face. The only African American that's ident easily identified as, as African American has half a head. Now you mean to tell me in the two to three years that they've been using this poster and it's prominently put all over the schools in a league that no one noticed how offensive that would be to not only myself, but all the staff and the children? You don't think the children notice the only representation of themselves on this poster being lifted up as the symbol of A-Leaf School District is a half-headed black girl? And you African Americans sit around and look at that poster every day and don't say a word? See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. How do you let that, how do you let that be the case? Go over to the administration building. And until just recently, you didn't see a black face. If you saw one, they were scurrying to their office so as not to be out and be identified. Go over to the ad building. Go over to the ad building, you'll see the superintendent's picture. And see, I need to go over there and take a picture of it. And they leave, I know you're listening. I'll be over there, what's today? Today is, I'll be over there Monday to take a picture so that we can broadcast that to other people. Now, I'm pretty sure that picture might be gone by the time I get there. But go and look at the picture. You'll see our Anglo-American uh, um, uh, superintendent surrounded by Anglo-American children who are only 2% of the population and upholding all the Anglo-American schools in the area. Not Texas Southern, not Prairie View, no African-Americans reportedly in the picture. And I'm gonna be over there tomorrow or on Monday to take a picture so that we can send this out. You can see what, what's going on in the district. And we all stand around and watch this, terribly afraid to speak out about it. And then they, 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 they tried to intimidate me and told me not to uh, say anything about it. They would write me up. Let me, let me help you with this write me up stuff. I know who I am. Did you think that I would take a, allow a white man to take some black ink and write on white paper, put it in a manila folder, and then say that defines who I am? You lost your mind. You lost your mind. I'm a free black man. I wasn't raised like that. I was at my father's funeral when Martin Luther King was shot. See, that's all a part of who I am. Now, you might try to say psychologically you've been traumatized. Well, for some of you guys who were about to set free over there, you better thank God that I've been traumatized like that. So I can't even think about who I am without looking back at my father who died at 27 and be connected to Martin Luther King who was assassinated on that day. I can't. And then guess what happened? My little grandson was born because God plays games. Sometimes God plays too much. My little grandson was born on Martin Luther King's holiday. My little, black, my little grandson, who was black, 
Samoan, and Indian was born on Martin Luther King Day. How ironic. So now his little, his little Samoan face is going to be holding up his hand, black power, uh, Samoan power. No, it's people power. We're all in this boat together. We're all in this boat together. So we have to come to the table. African, let me speak to my brothers right now. African American men, it's time to start holding your head up. It's time to start putting up with less. Now I'm not talking about cursing people out and unless absolutely necessary, later option. I'm not talking about just acting unruly. I'm not talking about burning down cities. I'm not talking about shooting people and all of those kind of things. But we have to step to the table and just say no enough is enough. And we have to hold our officials, political officials, accountable. Accountable. Uh, I, I, let me call some names because these are brothers who we need your help. I need your help, uh, Sylvester Turner. Uh, Senate Bill 300, or was it House Bill 300? One of those two, HB or Senate Bill 300, was authored by uh, a couple of gentlemen who, uh, when I looked at who they were, one of them is not, he's not minority, he's Anglo, was authored um, saying that it would, re it would remove certain rights the teachers have. Class size could be as high as, it, as, as the district determined for it to be, your local district, that you would have more difficulty filing a grievance, uh, they, um, that your grievance may or may, you might not even have the right to file a grievance. Um, what else is in that bill? The, um, the duty-free lunch, all of these things were called in question, things that teachers have fought for for so long that just gives a little bit of relief to the teachers. You know, you're not giving anybody anything great by saying I can take 45 minutes off to go prepare for my classes. Teachers work hard. I'm not talking about the kilo teachers. I'm here fighting for the killer teachers. Red, yellow, black, white, brown. There was a, a, a Caucasian lady who left the district and wrote them a four-page letter talking about the, this ridiculous behavior. That's an Anglo-American, I mean, uh, yeah, Anglo-American female. Go to the website, heat, H-E-A-T dot groupsite dot com. Pull it up. You'll see what she said. She left the district. She said, this, this is ridiculous behavior. Ridiculous behavior. Now, I haven't even begun, to, this, these are some of the problems. Edgar Dansby, you heard Edgar Dansby was railroaded out of the district for what? For misappropriating um, um, $29.95. Every year there's a graduation and Mr. Dansby would order a robe um, to wear at the graduation. He's a board member, first African American board member. He'd wear the robe. Now, I'm not, I don't know if you know Mr. Dansby, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant of who he is. We're talking about what he represented, the first African American and he was a male on the school board. Now for years they allowed him to do that. Now when he began to speak out and hold Dr. Lewis Sterner accountable for the failures in the in the education system in a uh, Dr. Lewis Sterner who only substitute taught for it long enough to get a, a doctorate in education so he could be the superintendent uh, and now he's gone now because he resigned um, and was and was heralded almost as uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm not upset at him. And let me give him a shout out too because he mentioned, he asked someone, say, oh, that guy, uh, you know, what's his name? Oh, is he still in there? You know, Errol Jones, is he, still in there? he knows who I am. I know who he is. Dr. Stern, let me give you a shout out. We're still working on resolving these issues in the district. We're working on it. So, hey, now let me also mention something about it. Uh, we, we understand that uh, the gentleman is now working for a local bank. Now, I, would, I don't have a problem with that except for the fact that uh, in my mind, and in others' mind too, I, I, I think that uh, he, working at the particular bank, and I have accounts at that bank, why would I be concerned about that? Because this same principal released my social security number to staff members on the A-Leaf campus. Nothing was done. Released my social security number. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now the gentleman who was upholding some of these things works at a local bank here. Now once we verify which bank he works at, we need to divest. We need to divest. We're not playing with these people. You have to speak, have to speak their language. They don't care if you file a grievance. They don't care about that. I just told you, the, the grievance system is backed up two years at the state level. And you're busy chasing lawsuits. You're chasing a lawsuit. A lawsuit that you can't even afford to fight because once you lose the fight, even if you win, they will appeal. And then you win again, they will appeal again. You're going to run out of money and run out of time before you win anything. And then you're going to, to the judges who are related to the people that are doing these things to you. That strategy is a failed strategy. Why did they pay me that kind of money? Because I have a radio show. I have a blog. And I write. They don't have a department in the school district that can deal with facts that are coming out like that. And that's why they lost. And that's why I was able to sit at home. 
which didn't make good sense. You know what you should have done, let me advise you a little bit because the doctoral degree, I have an MBA, I know a little bit about organization, that doesn't mean anything. Let me, let me help some of you educated folks out there too. You demonstrate your education by what you do, not that piece of paper that somebody gave you. You know you sat through school with a lot of people that have a piece of paper, that degree. There's a difference between having a, deg a degree in education. You can't use it, you just have some paper. You know some people that have degrees, and you need to get the book, uh, The Millionaire's Education, and look at the, the uh, numerous millionaires who don't have degrees. You know, we need to wake up, and I'm pro-education. I'm very pro-education. What time, do we have more time? We got one more minute or so. I'm gonna have to come back two more minutes. Wow, we can do a lot with two minutes. One more time, let's review why we're here. Mr. H.D. Chambers, handpicked by the A-Leaf ISD board after doing a 20 some odd thousand dollar national search, found Mr. H.D. Chambers in the Stafford Municipal School District. His entire district was not the size of one A-Leaf high school. The entire district was not the size of one A-Leaf high school. Now, the former superintendent Mr. James Smith, his firm was paid 20 plus thousand dollars to do a national search. The previous superintendent was making over $300,000 a year. So a national search with a budget of over $300,000 allotted to hiring a superintendent. And the former superintendent was able to find Mr. Chambers right next door. He does not have a doctorate, doesn't need to have one. But there are people in the school district that have doctorates. There are people all around this country that do have that level of education. He's not a bad guy. I told you I'm a proponent. I'm a supporter. But it's gone too far. It's gone too far. He does not possess the skill set to manage that district. We have a situation over there with the children in A-Leaf School District. One particular school, let me call it out clearly, Kilo Middle School in my opinion and opinion of other professional educators are in a dangerous situation. It must stop. Contact your pastors, contact your legislature, because if something happens over there because of pressure that this young man is under, you're just gonna be on your head. Hey, my name is Errol Jones. I'm Errol Jones today. I'll be Errol Jones tomorrow. I'll be Errol Jones the next day. We want you to, we want you to take some action. Remember, one more time, heat. H-E-A-T dot group site dot com. We're not going to stop until we reform some of these things in the school districts. How can we do that? Let me throw this out to you, and I'm going to finish up with that later. <clears throat> the, the STAR test, stop your children from taking that test on that day. If they don't show up for that test, it, it sets the district back. It gets their attention. If your child is just late one day a week, we have 45,000 young people in the 80 school district. That would be 45,000 tardies. The school district gets paid when your children show up for school. Let them show up late just once a month. That's 45,000 potential tardies. You will get their attention. You can file all the grievances that you want. It hasn't worked yet. You're playing right into their hand. At this time, it's time to speak the language of the people with the money. You gotta know how this thing works. Stay tuned. We'll be back next week, same place, same time, same time. My name is Errol Jones. Have a good day. Hey, Ooh, how you doing? I'm good, sir. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm doing great. Give me some, uh... The only 1230 KCOH Les Holmes here just kind of stepping in just for a hot minute. It's about 2 o'clock and we've got the uh, block party vote going on outside. We should come on out. We've got a step Rito coming up. You've got about 15 minutes to show your face in the place. We're looking for you out here. Got a lot of fun food and everything sponsored by Bayway uh, Auto Group. Uh, come on out. We'll have a good time.